All right, good afternoon everybody. Thanks for following along. Uh, let's see, I wanted to do uh, a first video with regard to the transaxle. So in the last video, I showed this custom billet piece that RCR manufactures and, and provides with the kit. And that was called the transaxle plate. And the point of the transaxle plate, like I mentioned, is to be able to mate uh, mid-engine transaxle with the Chevy LT4 engine. Okay, here's a picture of the Graziano transaxle, and this is the same mid-engine transaxle that comes with an Audi R8 and also various models of Lamborghinis. Now, this particular transmission can be sourced through race car replicas, RCR, and they sell it to you. It's a brand new unit. It comes with the warranty. And that, in my opinion, is the best route to go. There are other choices. You know, you can get a used Ferrari transaxle or, or a Porsche transaxle. But, you know, it's nice to buy a new product that you know is going to work and that you don't have to first get reconditioned. Now there is one challenge with regard to these Graziano transaxles and that's the point of this video. So I'm going to shift over and show you these two items. So these are called drop gears and what drop gears are is they will actually, you know, be replacing another set of drop gears in the transmission and it will slightly change the gear ratio at, you know, with regard to every gear in the transaxle. It's very similar if you were using a conventional transmission and rear end. If you were going to change the rear end ratio to make the car you know, more friendly to a lower revving engine or more friendly to a higher revving engine, you, know, you would change the final drive ratio. You know, these drop gears essentially change the final drive ratio in the Graziano. So there's a gentleman on the GT40s forum who did a lot of research into this and he's one of the vendors that provides a number of different drop gear sets for different purposes. And I'm going to talk about a couple of the options in this video. But let's take a look back at my iPad and here is a disassembled Graziano. And I'm gonna to point to where the drop gears are. Whoop. Don't really want that. It's these gears down here. So you can see this is a big job. They got to take the cover off, then they take all the gears out, and then they put these back in, check the tolerances, clean all the parts, and reassemble it. So my transaction was actually on the way from Michigan, from RCR, down to Maryland, where I'm going to have these gears installed. So it's uh, you know, it, it's, it's a good setup because it doesn't have to come to my house first. It gets drop shift right to the transmission shop. And I'm going to send these gears out this week. And in a couple weeks, I'll, I'll get the tra transaxle back with the gears installed. So I wanted to do this video now because obviously, you know, once these gears are gone, I, I really wouldn't be able to do this video. So let's take a look at what the motivation is. Now, I have some gear some gear ratio charts and these charts were published by different forum members on gt40s.com so once again if you are building a kit car you really have to you know get familiar with the forum and and research all the builds and how people approach certain aspects of the builds and you know a it, it'll consume a lot of time but b I think it's time well spent because you learn a lot. So this is the stock Graziano gear ratio. Now, you know, a Graziano is meant for an overhead cam engine that would be provided in a Lamborghini or an Audi. And those engines, I think, rev to about 8,000 RPM. And they provide, you know, they deliver their torque higher in the rev band. An LT4 engine delivers 650 foot-pounds of torque at about 3,000 RPM. So clearly, the, the way you generate power in a pushrod Chevy is very different than in a high-revving overhead cam engine. 
So, you know, typically I like to accelerate on the street to about 3,000 RPM. And with the stock Graziano, you're only doing about 16 miles an hour. So that first gear doesn't, you know, it just becomes, uh, you know, not all that useful. Now, if you're designing a race car, that's a whole nother story, but I'm designing a street car. So I wanted to, I just don't want to have to overshift on the street and keep the revs down, which keeps the noise down. I normally cruise at about uh, 2000 RPM. And with the stock garage, you're only doing 49 miles an hour. Uh, I like to cruise on the Jersey Turnpike at about 75. So here with the stock trans, you would be doing 3000 RPM. So keep in mind, this engine is about six inches away from your ear. You know, it's right behind you and it's going to be really noisy, you know, cruising down the highway at 3000 RPM. So there are a number of solutions to, to help to help fix this. The most popular set of gears, uh, they changed the standard gear to 1038 gear. And you can see at 3000 RPM, you're doing about 20 miles an hour, which isn't too bad. But at 2000 RPM, you know, you're doing 63 miles an hour. So, you know, if you're in a low speed limit area, that's not a bad thing. But, you know, if you're, if you're out in Montana or even in Jersey where the speed limit is 65, you know, you, you're probably going to wind up cruising, you know, at about 2,400, 2,500 RPM, which isn't bad, but in my opinion, it's not ideal. And if we take a look at uh, the C6 Corvette, and I had a C5 Corvette and I really liked the gearing. So here it's 3,000 RPM, you get to 23 miles an hour, and then uh, cruising at 75, you split the difference here. You're probably revving at about 1850 or 1800 RPM. So that's a really nice gear ratio, in my opinion, for the, for the street for a pushrod V8 engine. So this is the uh, gear ratio I chose. It's a 0.903. And look at this. At 3000 RPM, you're going approximately 23 miles an hour, which is identical to C6. And then... Uh, you know, roughly at 2000, mile, 2000 RPM, you'll be doing over 70 miles an hour. So all in all, pretty good, pretty good compromise. Now this is just an estimate. And once again, you know, guys on the forum put these things together and it was really helpful just to identify there is a potential issue and that there are some solutions out there. So I logged on to this website called dragtimes.com and I put in my specific tire size. And I'm gonna zoom in here, you know, 26.6 .6 inch diameter, all the different gear ratios. And, you know, let's see what, what the more accurate numbers look like. So at 3000 RPM, there we go, 23 miles an hour. So it's the same as the, as the C6. And then if we're cruising at about 75 miles an hour, 2100 RPM. So to me, this is a great compromise. And that's the reason why I purchased the, I purchased the uh, drop gears and I think it'll work out well. Now there is a vendor that will provide the 1038 gear to give you the faster acceleration. And then they also sell an overdrive gear. So I actually label this one. So the 1038 drop gears with an overdrive gear. So you get a very low first gear. So at 3000, you know, 3000 RPM, you're doing almost 20 miles an hour. So you probably want to gun it, you know, over 4000 RPM to, to blast from the start. But then you have the benefit of the overdrive at 2000 RPM. You're, you're doing 73 miles an hour. Very, you know, very similar to the 0.903. But, you know, in my opinion, for street driving, I sort of like the 903. It is less money because you're not buying an extra, an extra gear. Okay, so there's a wrap. Uh, once again, you know, my next video, I'm going to focus on getting the engine in the car. I just thought people would appreciate seeing these drop gears and Understanding that, you know, whether you're building a factory five type kit, kit car, or component car, or race car replica, 
you know, there's lots of engine choices. You know, if you do an overhead cam engine, you know, it's going to rev higher. If you're doing a push rod engine, you know, the torque, you know, the torque curve is different and you want to gear the car appropriately so it's more fun to drive. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care.